Robinson. Welcome to Harrisonburg, Virginia. James Madison with David Padgett, Connor Onion for the Max Sunbelt Challenge. This is the top game in the challenge. First place Akron in the MAC. James Madison tied for the nation's lead with 21 wins on the year, including a big one to start the season against Michigan State. This is a, a great bigs matchup tonight. Enrique Freeman, two-time defensive player of the year in the MAC against TJ Bickerstaff. And so far, James Madison has been winning that battle. Enrique Freeman, a couple of offensive rebounds, but nothing to show for it in the scoring column. And, and right now, James Madison just has Akron doing everything offensively way out behind the three-point line. I mean, they can't even get the ball in the lane off the dribble. They had one post touch to Freeman, but James Madison right now is just asserting their dom dominance physically on the defensive end of the court has been the difference in this game. Jalen Carey, who comes off the bench, misses that. David, our audience just watched Houston play defense. <laughs> so it, they should be accustomed yes. to seeing the type of game that this may be. You're going to get used to that style all night on the two. And that's a putback, and the first field goal comes from Ali Ali. Well, so far, five of Akron's first eight field goals are three-point attempts. So that just goes to show you what James Madison is going to let them do, or excuse me, force them to do, to try to beat them from the perimeter by making jump shots. It was an 0 of 9 start from the floor for Akron before that, the most misses to start a game this season against this vaunted James Madison defense. Wooden with the step back. That's a two. A pretty good defense by Akron on that possession. Julian Wooden just with better offense. Tough little step back jump shot right inside that three point line. That is a guy this James Madison fan base absolutely loves. Fifth year player. And he'll try to stop Freeman tonight who goes hard to the rack and gets fouled. Well, James Madison trapped. Enrique Freeman set a little side ball screen right there. They threw it to him on the roll. James Madison actually had two guys on him. But you can't let him split the trap. That was the only reason he was able to get out of there and get to the rim. And Enrique Freeman just the physical beating he takes because of the amount of attention he draws offensively. Just really, really impressive going to the free throw line here, trying to earn it the hard way. He leads the country in double doubles with 20 out of 23 games. And it sinks the first free throw. The college basketball fans likely familiar with Zach Eady at Purdue, Hunter Dickinson at Kansas. Armando Baycott at North Carolina. This is a guy that doesn't get a lot of pub because of not as much TV exposure. You're going to be really impressed if this is your first time watching him tonight. There's no doubt about it. And he's not one of those guys that, that seeks the attention either. We had a chance to talk to him today after shoot around. Just an unbelievable young man, extremely well spoken. Speaking with his coach, John Gross. His mother is a police officer in Cleveland. And, had a funny story about how he called him one time to see what he was doing, and he had, couldn't answer the phone because he had to mow the lawn. I mean, just an unbelievable story, and the improvement that he has made in his four-year career at Akron has just been remarkable to watch. Averaging a double-double. He sits here for Akron. The post matchup has Sammy Hunter against Jalen Carey. Freshman big for James Madison. Dipping late to the clock. Here is Carey. Backdoor cut and a beautiful pass to Raekwon Horton. A beautiful pass is right. Jalen Carey caught that ball on the roll. Was able to maintain his balance without losing control in a terrific back cut and a great bounce pass with an easy layup. But not a lot's going to be very easy on either end for these teams offensively. You see right there, even Acker playing pretty good defense. But James Madison so far has been dominating on the defensive end. Shema Scott with the miss. Horton who had that backdoor cut has the rebound. And again, I keep touching on it here early. James Madison is going to be content with making Akron shoot a lot of contested jump shots. And so far, already seven three-point attempts. And Jalen Carey makes significant impact on this game already. A great bounce pass that last time. And right there, the easy two-handed dunk. The Dukes coming out on fire to start this one. Carey can pass, and he can slam. That is the younger brother of Vernon Carey, who played at Duke. As Hunter misses another three, it's an 0 of 8 start from out deep for the Zips. This is Michael Green, nice handle. He's the former starting point guard now coming off the bench for James Madison. And Noah Friedel lost the handle, got it back. Late shot clock here for Green. Getting checked up by Caleb Thornton. 
Down to five. Can he get off a clean look? He cannot. And Carey defended well by Sammy Hunter. A good defense there by Sammy Hunter holding his ground. Jalen Carey had to obviously had to force that with no time left on the shot clock, but a good defensive possession by Akron. And that triple, that was a tough look. And Akron finally breaks the seal on James Madison's well, defense. One of the first times they were able to get the ball in the paint with a somewhat of a clean look. And great triple that time just off the dribble. And on the other end, just too easy for Michael Green early in the shot clock, just putting his head down and getting all the way to the rim. Oh, beautiful spin on that, too. Get that over the hump. This is a, a non-conference game here in early February. Max Sunbelt Challenge. Akron first place in the back. James Madison, one of the top teams in the South. For large okay. Venti. Well, well, thanks for that lesson. John Gross was having the Venti. And I don't think he needed it because of how energetic he is every time you're around him. Oh, yeah. And the one thing I love about the way he coaches and runs his program is everything is positive. The positivity is a huge word that they use. He said today, he goes, we don't allow our guys to have bad days. There's no moodiness. There's no coming and moping about anything. Every day is a blessing. Got to have great energy, and I think that's terrific. He's just, he was awesome to talk today at shoot around. Some of that is his natural disposition. Some of that is working for Thad Mata, now the head coach at Butler for so many years. They were together at Ohio State and Xavier before John Gross became the head coach at Ohio. And there's Bickerstaff in tight. Usually makes those. And that'll be after ball. And T.J. Bickerstaff's not going to get many more open looks than that one. Just rushed it a little bit. But you see coming out of the timeout, James Madison trying to go at Enrique Freeman, who already has one foul in this game. So going to try to do whatever they can to get him to pick up that second and maybe get him to the bench. Because obviously, it goes without saying, Akron is a completely different team when he is not on the floor. Freeman and Bickerstaff, the opposite of this drive, now up to set the ball screen. It's Freeman. Ali Ali gives it up. And another late clock stop against this stingy defense for James Madison. Johnson cut off by Green. Grinding his way in. And he's short. But an offensive rebound for Dawson. Good hustle there by Michael Dawson. Because that was a really good defensive possession again as we get a kick ball here. But Akron just, they're having a hard time getting the ball inside the three-point line. I mean, James Madison is doing a great job of being in their gaps. Their gap awareness has been terrific so far in this game. They are just not allowing them to get any dribble penetration. And when they've thrown the ball inside, there's been two or three guys sitting there. So executing that scouting report to a T so far. How do you change that if you're active? I think they got to get a little bit more ball movement and player movement away from the ball. So a little bit more cutting. Right now they're just standing too much, trying to do it too much one-on-one -on -one against James Madison. That's just not going to work. They're too good defensively. Noah Friedel had that defense, arguably the most important player on this team. And that splashes down for Michael Green. He could provide knocking down the three right there. You see, looked easy and in rhythm, and it's amazing. When you are off to a great start defensively, it's amazing the kind of confidence boost that can give you offensively. And guys coming into the game say, you know what, let's just worry about sitting down and guarding. And the offensive end usually seems to take care of itself. Enrique Freeman still hasn't been able to break loose. Here's Ali, short on that three. And again, another three-point attempt for Akron, which I, I just don't think is the game plan that's going to be successful for them to come in here and try to get a win. And that's all come with James Madison shooting it well before that miss. They've made five of their last seven shots. Well, Akron has been ice cold, and they won't get a shot up here because the arrow's with James Madison. Another turnover here, and just cannot say enough about how impressed I've been so far with the, the relentless physicality and the relentless pressure from James Madison and Mark Byington his team plays up tempo gets a lot of credit for how good they are offensively but they are very very underrated outside of the Sun Belt from a defensive standpoint very well liked in this state his fourth year he's had a winning season all three years before already clinched a winning season this year the guy that grew up about 100 miles from Harrisonburg in Salem Virginia the hot head coaching names, Mark buying to nationally right now. Well, Bickerstaff spins into a wall, and there's the defensive player of the year in the Mac Freeman. Freeman did a great job there, just holding his ground and just walling up. Didn't leave his feet. Made it tough for Bickerstaff to get a clean look there. Now can they get him going down on this end? Can they get anything going down on this end? 
And they can't, a turnover for Freeman. And you see right now, Akron is being sped up offensively because of the pressure that James Madison is applying. Enrique Freeman had a what looked like a pretty good look at it, a wide open layup right there, but was going just a little bit too fast. And John Gross saying just slow down a little bit. He caught it in the lane and just assumed there were going to be more defenders there than there were and kicked it to the corner when he didn't need to. So Akron just got to slow down a little bit offensively. They're starting to press a little bit, but give James Madison credit for the way they've started this game. Top scorer for Akron, Enrique Freeman. No field goals yet. More than halfway done in this first half. All four of his points from the free throw line. And Green banged that three earlier. Drive and kick to Edwards. Hopping into the lane. Green wanted another one. Gives it up again. Late clock. Edwards. Heavy on that. And Freeman volleyballing for it. And that'll be James Madison ball. That was about as good of offensive basketball as you can get right there between Michael Green and Terrence Edwards. Just driving kick, a couple good shot fakes. Terrence Edwards got a great look at it, but Akron unable to secure the rebound. Good job by Jalen Carey of keeping that one alive. Give James Madison another crack at it here. That was like 30 seconds of two-man basketball. <laughs> but you know what? When it's done right, it's a beautiful thing to watch. And Aaron, Terrence Edwards got about as good of a look as you can get, just unable to knock it down. James Madison dominant defensively to start this game, leading it by nine. And Friedel, nice misdirects, mean intentions up to the rim. And, ooh, Hunter stepped out of bounds. The fifth guys, Don Staley, Gino Ariema, going at it tomorrow at uh, 2 Eastern. Connor Onion, David Padgett. We're in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Max Sunbelt challenge here. It'd be hard to beat what App State and Toledo did in double overtime earlier today, but expected to be the best game of this challenge. And then James Madison has been feisty down on this end on defense. Well, they're showing you why they're tied for the most wins in Division I basketball. And it's just an incredible performance here through the first 12 minutes of this game on the defense end of the court. And... They have just been flying around and almost at times look like there are six or seven guys on the court for the Dukes. And finally, Akron able to knock down a perimeter jump shot. Sammy Hunter who missed their last game against Central Michigan, knocking down a much needed three and a much needed basket. And it's on him and Dawson, Michael Dawson, two of their best three point shooters. Try to crack that seal a little bit. Wouldn't the miss? One and done on the rebound for Hunter. And don't be surprised to see maybe Akron look to push the pace a little bit more when they get a clean defensive rebound, try to get out and score before this half-court defense can set up. Well, Freeman is really fighting to get touches right now. He's a facilitator here in the finish for Ali. A yeah, great little cut off the elbow action, the high post action, and Freeman with a great find to Ali Ali in there. So John Gross making some adjustments in that last timeout, a little 5-0 run here. Try to chip back into this lead a little bit for the Zips, but they got to do it on this end as well. Just because your offense hasn't been going well, you got to continue to dig in defensively and get stops. And they have, holding James Madison to a three and a half minute scoring drought. So it's going down by nine. Five on the shot clock. Edwards lost it. Two on the shot clock and Tribble breaks it away. Yeah, now you got to go. You got to go. You got five on four numbers here. You got to try to score quickly. And with Edwards late to join the play, Thornton misses the three. And they can't capitalize on those numbers. And James Madison has done a very nice job here of rebounding the ball already. See Noah Fried to help, not going to miss too many of those. But the, the offensive backboard was a concern for John Gross in this game. They do. He said, we got to eliminate easy baskets. And how do we do that? Take away transition. Don't give him any offensive rebounds. And so far, James Madison is doing a pretty decent job in both areas taking advantage of the opportunities that they have gotten. As a former big man yourself, you're still big, but former post player. I don't player, think I've, former player, the key word there. Former player. I don't think I've ever asked you what the key to the game is, and you haven't said rebounding. Now well, that three swirls down. Craig Tribble has added that to his game. He certainly has, and again, two threes here. May change the approach a little bit for James Madison defensively if they can start to knock down a couple jump shots and maybe soften up that defense a little bit. But back to your question, there's not a basketball coach on earth that says that the backboard is not one of the most important things. It, it, just, it is. You know, it's, it's almost impossible to win if you get out rebounded all the time. And both these teams are plus six on the year in rebound margin. 
as we see the offensive foul there on the illegal screen. But both these teams just do such a great job. You see the little elbow rub screen there and a great pass. Terrific finish by Ali Ali. But James Madison just keeping that ball alive, tipping it around. Jalen Carey, the recipient there. What that pass from Wooden. Yeah, it, these guys have just played so much basketball together. Obviously, Jalen Carey, a newcomer being young, but they're one of the most experienced teams in the country, and you can just tell by the way they play. They just they make the right play all the time, and very rarely are they ever going to beat themselves. And James Madison had the benefit of a foreign tour this summer, went to Italy, made pasta together, and played some basketball. But seminal moment in the building of this team as Freeman will go to the free throw line. This is where he's grinded out most of his points tonight. Actually, all of his points tonight have come right here at the line. And James Madison electing not to double that time. Enrique Freeman did a great job of staying patient, using the dribble to bait the defense, and able to get to the middle of the floor and get fouled, and going back to that free throw line again to try to make this a one-point game. And that was starting post player T.J. Bickerstaff's second foul for James Madison. That is not insignificant. Those are the two guys that we highlighted, Freeman and Bickerstaff. All right, coming up, big Monday, Duke against Wake. Duke trying to run down North Carolina and Virginia at the top of the standings in the ACC. Wake Forest as of today, one of the last teams out of the NCAA tournament field. And there's never a night off in the Big 12. Number four, Kansas. Number 23, Texas Tech, all part of big Monday. Monty Lyles into the game. He usually gives Freeman a quick spell. That's what he'll do here. Yeah, especially with that next time out coming here in about 40 seconds and Enrique Freeman already having one personal foul. John Gross doesn't want to risk it going back out on defense for him picking up his second. A little run here for Akron to get within one. And that three is heavy. James Madison has gone cold. And Wooden wasn't reset yet. T.J. Bickerstaff <laughs> kind of kicking himself there, saying, why did I try to throw it to a guy that was out of bounds? But you know, James Madison, they've gotten some pretty decent looks. That time, Xavier Brown, a very capable three-point shooter, just unable to knock it down. But they've done a good job of moving the ball and not let it sticking, getting good looks at it. Well, remember this point in the half, 430 in the half. And Bickerstaff goes to the bench with two fouls. And Freeman tagging a couple on him. Just ahead of that under four timeout. Tamari Johnson brings in the three. And that's what he has been doing the last couple of games. The freshman starting to play a little bit more like a sophomore now that we're in February, but has been shooting the ball really well. And that gives them a much needed boost off of that bench. John Gross has a lot of confidence putting him in the game. Noah Friedel cannot answer. Rebound for Johnson, who just hit the three. Pride of Lions Township High School. Tavari Johnson with the setup. And Dawson the miss. Offensive rebound. And Johnson hit a couple outside shots in the win against Central Michigan. On the take here. And he lost it. Favorite in the Sun Belt. A game behind Troy and App State in their league as of tonight. James Madison trying to snap out of a little drought here. They had a nine-point lead. They've missed nine of their last ten shots. And Xavier Brown running the show at point guard here. And Akron has turned it up defensively themselves. Again, another pretty good look. Just ain't able to knock it down. But this is what James Madison's doing. A great job of and Coach Green mentioned it. The bench production for James Madison and Jalen Carey has been a big reason why. Already had a major impact in this first half. But this is the kind of game that we expected. Maybe a little bit more high scoring than this, but two teams that just beat the crap out of each other defensively with their physical play. And so far, it has been that. There has been nothing easy in and around the rim for either team. And then right on cue, Greg Tribble says, you know what? I can prove the, the geniuses on the sideline sitting there wrong. I, I was going to say, I, I felt your arm bar as you were saying they're beating the crap out of each other. Cutters getting chucked left and right in this game. I thought the uh, I thought the there was a, a big emphasis in making the game less physical in the offseason. It's amazing how that disappears come uh, February. But James Madison here, pretty good look at three, but again just keeping the ball alive. And a great pass by Julian Wooden. 
Jalen Carey's had a major impact off the bench in this game. Already six points and a couple of rebounds. Great bounce pass on a backdoor layup. So James Madison getting a lot of help from their bench. Like Coach Green said, could be a major difference in this game. So Friedel is short on the three, and Freeman there to grab it away. So it's amazing. It seems like anytime he gets, he goes after the ball with two hands every time, which is a sign of an awesome rebounder. But when he gets both hands on it, very rarely does he let it go. Well, Edwards almost lost it. Green got another three. Is he going to come over and thank us after the game? Because every time we watch him play in person, he seems to play pretty well. <laughs> did, did you coach his shot pregame? You, you put your old coaching hat on, didn't you? You know, it's amazing. Shooters are just going to shoot. That may sound simple, but they could miss 100 in a row. But the next one's always going in. And he has shot the ball with a lot of confidence last couple times. We've had a chance to watch him. And already two big threes in this game. Well, went on the road a couple weeks ago at App State. Hit a couple threes. Green has two threes in this first half. Going inside, high off window. And that's out of bounds. Going to Akron. The guy that they say is Bronx tough. Michael Green showing a little finesse. And again, it goes back to the bench production. Michael Green was starting majority of the season earlier this year. Has been coming off the bench as of late. Seems to be embracing that role. And when he gets his feet set and gets that much room, he's just going to make a majority of those. So a little bit of a breakdown there by Akron. But Michael Green, Jalen Carey giving this James Madison Dukes team a big boost off of that bench. What do you know about guys from the Bronx? Kevin Ware, Kemba Walker, that you coached against? Yeah. <laughs> Kevin Walker brings up bad memories. Beat us in the, or excuse me, the Big East tournament in the finals and then went on that six-game miraculous run to win the NCAA tournament. So still scarred by that one a little bit. Thanks for bringing it yeah, up. You're welcome for the nightmares. Final minute of this first half. One-point game. We expected this to be a really, really good mid-major showdown. It has been in the first half. And James Madison extends it with Horton. And Jalen Carey looking like the Joker out there just catching the ball 10 feet off the block. Little bounce passes for back cut layups, offensive rebounds. The bench so far has been the difference why James Madison has got this three point lead here before halftime. He says, Get that out of here. Terry kicks that. Well, this is part of the Max Sunbelt Challenge, the first round in November. You remember the game that James Madison played against Kent State, double overtime. The Mac came out with seven wins, Sunbelt with five today. 11 games with one tomorrow, 8 to 2 Sunbelt. And at our latest tally. And yeah, that was a great road win for James Madison. Had a very difficult Kent State environment to play. Mm. Quick turnover. James Madison on the run. Carry another rim run. Shot clock turned off. Last chance for Thornton of the Zips. Down to two. Thornton cannot get a shot up, but there was a foul. There will be foul. But this will be two shots for Caleb Thornton, who's a 50% foul shooter. Ooh, it looked like James Madison was going to go into the locker room with a big lead. Akron was struggling to score, then took a lead. And that cuts in a little bit on this James Madison run before halftime. I don't think it's any secret how this uh, home crowd feels about that call, but we obviously have the advantage of replay right here in front of us. Just waiting for the, the guitar to start playing again. <laughs> Which one? Five electric guitars here. Oh, put back, and Lyles can't hit it. Would have counted. 28 points coming from the bench, so big production there, but Akron's going to have to make an adjustment offensively try to go against this physical James Madison defense here over the next 20 minutes. Well, there wasn't a lot of scoring, but the guys that did score, these are the ones that led their team. Greg Tribble with seven, Freeman with six without a field goal for Akron. It was Michael Green with eight points, hitting two three-pointers, along with Jalen Carey. It was an electric first half for Carey. Yeah, again, those 16 points from those two guys alone coming off the bench. So it's a big-time contribution from Mark Byington off that bench. But, you know, if you're Akron, you've got to be somewhat pleased, honestly, only being down four. Just they didn't play very well. We see a turnover there coming out. They had some careless turnovers, but still in this basketball game. And it's, it's a tough thing to do when you're not clicking offensively 
you can't hang your head on the other end of the floor. You got to dig in defensively and get stops and just hope that your offense can come around at some point. And James Madison trying to beat their third preseason favorite on their non-conference schedule. And a good start to the half with Terrence Edwards. And not really a major part of his game, a capable shooter. Not a consistent one, but a capable one. And I actually thought he should have shot it the first time when he caught it, but went for the tougher one with a step back three. But nonetheless, opening this up quickly here to start the second half. And he has not shot it great from outside lately. Nice take, Greg Tribble. Officials continuing to let both of these teams play physically, which you would expect. Both these teams, even though they're considered, in air quotes, mid-major teams, they play physically and defensively like high-major programs. This is a quad one chance for Akron coming on the road. That's the best win that you can have in the eyes of the NCAA Tournament Committee. And that's in and out. And a rebound for Sammy Hunter for Akron. Yeah, big bullet dodge there. Noah Friedel gets his feet set. Not much room. He's not going to miss too many times. But a pretty quiet game so far offensively for Friedel. But James Madison making up for it with that bench production. Here's Freeman. His first field goal comes in the second half. And you see right away, they're going to continue to try to get the ball inside. Even on that first possession where they turned it over, they were trying to get it into Freeman. Looks like James Madison's going to continue to just play one-on-one -on -one in there. And, I have to keep an eye on that, how James Madison is able to stop Freeman if he gets it going here a little bit offensively. This might be the last time all year he sees coverage like that. Yeah, and if he gets it going here, I have a feeling James Madison will start to bring a little bit of help. He's just too skilled in there to play one-on-one, -on -one, but Pickerstaff doing a pretty good job. Three, Brown splashes it down. was green off the bench in the first half with a lift for James Madison from three. It's Brown in that starting line at the last three weeks with a hit for the Dukes in half number two. That's short for Hunter. And one and done with James Madison clearing the glass. Yeah, throwing it the ball inside to Ali. Ali that time. But I think if you're Akron, you can't have an offensive possession where Enrique Freeman doesn't touch the ball. There's Edwards. Tough look. Bickerstaff snatches that and puts it back. Again, you just see James Madison kind of imposing their will. And the confidence of Akron seems to be kind of slipping away here. I know there's a lot of time left in this game with 17 minutes, but Akron just seems, they can't seem to find a rhythm on either end of the court. Oh, Brown gave triple nothing until the turnaround. Yeah, and that was pretty good defense, but sometimes good offense just wins out. That was just a great move by Greg Tribble. But again, another tough earned basket. There just has not been anything easy in this game for the Zips offensively. The first player in this game to double figures either way is triple. And Akron will get it back down six. Well, we knew both teams were going to look to play inside through their big guys. But this is what Akron has to do. you got to get the ball inside. You see when he's in there one-on-one, -on -one, he's so skilled. He's so long, able to finish. And this time, T.J. Bickerstaff just shoving Enrique Freeman out of the way for the easy tip in. In a game like this, referees are going to let you play through that kind of contact, especially on the road. Going to be tough to get a call on a push up like that. You good with the contacts that they're letting ride? Yeah, I mean, we're in February now. It's a road game, a chance at a quad one win. Both these teams, two of the best mid major programs in the country, it's been a very physical game. That's not going to change here in the second half. So you got to put a body on somebody to try to block out. Well, Freeman was shut off by Bickerstaff and stayed with him. <laughs> Enrique Freeman having to earn it. A little bit more difficult way that time, but see if those back-to-back -back baskets here may be able to get him going down there on that left block. He's going to get his double-double. He does most nights. He has 10 points, 7 rebounds. Edwards, oh, that was right in the heart of the rim. Yeah, big break there for Akron and cleaning it up, not allowing the offensive rebound. Again, get 25 in gold, a touch on the block. Ali, yes! Or just hit a corner three, like I said, right? <laughs> but another guy, Ali Ali. Good coaching, Padgett. Akron, that's why I'm sitting over here. Akron's second leading scorer has had a very quiet night offensively, but knocking down a three. And it seems like when James Madison gets a little momentum going, Akron has an answer for him. We time a big corner three from Ali. Wooden. Can't clap back. Offensive rebound. Quick pass, Wooden. And that spins off. Two looks at it for Julian Wooden. And Akron and James Madison sure look like NCAA tournament teams when you watch them.
Well, if either one of these teams is able to make it to the NCAA tournament and you're a high major program that may or may not draw them in the first round, you'd be a nervous wreck a couple days leading up to that first mm -hmm. game. You would not want to play either one of these teams. And, you know, it's, it's just really difficult, no matter how great of a season you're having, which both these teams are, obviously. We see Enrique Freeman starting to pick it up here offensively, knocking down the three. But it, it's just really difficult because you got to go schedule high major games on the road and you got to win them. But the problem is the high major teams, Jalen Carey with another great bounce pass or backdoor pass, the high major teams don't want to schedule you because they know that you can come in and beat them. So it's a conundrum that's hard to solve. But both of these teams would not be surprised, like we've mentioned, to see them on Selection Sunday have their name called. Scott slides off the three. That carry pass to Horton snaps a 10-0 Akron run, and the Zips will keep it in this tie game. Well, this matchup in the non-conference, it gives you flashbacks to the Bracket Buster days. The, the brainchild of Burke Magnus, Nick Dawson. You had great mid-major teams going at it this time of year and what a lot of times turned into a catapult into an NCAA tournament run. VCU 2011 comes to mind. They went on the road, played Wichita State, won a one-point game, went to the first four, and then went to the final four, yep. playing in the bracket buster that year. Yeah, and what it does, too, is this has a, a, a postseason type feel to it. The intensity, how hard it is to win games like this. Because come conference tournament time, you got to win three games in a row, and those championship games and semifinals have this type of feel, so it's a good prep for that. And Freeman short on it. He's gotten himself going from the field of this half. But they have made him grind. James Madison has 13 points, eight rebounds for Freeman. Edwards lost it, got it back and missed. And Akron coming off a half where they had their lowest first half output scoring wise of the year. And in and out for Johnson. Carried through the back door, but a step on the baseline for Horton. It's been a good connection tonight, Carey playing out of that high post. It has. He has been a facilitator. But these two guys, Enrique Freeman, a quiet first half, relatively speaking. But you mentioned only one rebound away from that 21st double-double of the season. And T.J. Bickerstaff, only six points and three rebounds. But he's had a, a good impact on this game by making Enrique Freeman earn everything in there around the rim. And... Jalen Carey has had just as big of a contribution coming off that bench. He's had eight points, a couple great assists, a couple key offensive rebounds. So kind of a two-headed monster on the inside for James Madison. Between Vickerstaff and Carey, been very productive in this game. Well, hard to take Carey off the floor right now if you're Mark Byington. He's in the post checking Freeman here. Down to five on the shot clock. It's Scott. And the three taps around. And Raekwon Horton secures the miss. There has not been one easy rebound in, for either team in this game so far. I mean, everything, there's three or four guys going after the ball. Oh, in tight space, Edwards keeps the handle and finishes. And John Gross going crazy over there on that Akron sideline. That was, it was a weird looking play. It looked like there were quite a few deflections, which I think prevented the officials from calling a travel there. But nonetheless, Terrence Edwards able to finish. And the dribbles hit from that spot a few times, not here. John Gross has to be sore after games. He's in a stance a lot when his team's down on this end. Really, really fun, energetic guy to be around. The Akron head coach, John Gross. Friedel, three. And Horton got rid of triple and goes back to the basket and gets fouled. Akron has been very fortunate about four or five times in this game where Noah Friedel has gotten wide open behind the three-point line and just cannot buy one. He's one of those guys, every time he lets it go, you think it's going in, you're surprised when he doesn't make it. But again, an offensive rebound that James Madison has been able to convert and turn into points with Raekwon Horton going to the free throw line here. But on the other end, two possessions in a row for Akron where Enrique Freeman has not touched the ball offensively. And two empty trips to show for it. So I have a feeling 25 and gold is going to get a touch next time down. 
And you gotta love it. The guys are hitting the floor on box outs in this game like we just saw. Fourth regular season matchup with the Earth Suns against the Warriors tonight, 8.30 Eastern Time on ABC. The Warriors are thinking, we got to get those guys eventually, right? Three regular season matchups. Suns have won all of them. Two of those have been close. And the fourth showdown coming up tonight and starts with NBA Countdown before the game at 8.30 on ABC. A rebound for Ali. And it stays a three-point lead for JMU. Ali taking it 94 feet before he shut off. Here's that touch for Freeman. Would force the give up. And Thornton short on it. Great job that time by James Madison on the block out. Had, Akron had a couple guys trying to go for it, but just couldn't get anywhere near it. And a lot of action for Carey for James Madison. He created some space for Green. And a rebound. Dawson is clipped by Carey. Akron and James Madison. Good to see these guys in March. Counts per game. So for him to be able to, to learn how to play against that kind of attention has been really remarkable to watch. And he's done a great job here tonight. But James Madison has made him earn every single basket. Maybe a little bit of a carry there by Caleb Thornton. But the officials let us play on. And Rike Freeman down in the post for Akron. More double doubles than Zach Eady. More than Armando Baycott. More than Hunter Dickinson. And he's fouled by Carey, who just was tagged with his third foul. Right away coming out of that timeout, Akron run a little set to get the high-low look. You know, it's hard to play one-on-one -on -one coverage in a high-low situation like that. Jalen Carey's going to go to the bench and T.J. Bickerstaff coming in. But as a defender, you can't play behind. If you play on one side, you're at a disadvantage. It's hard to front. So good job there by Akron of running that little set. Now we got Enrique Freeman iso here underneath that bounce play. But you can see three black shirts in the area at all times. Yeah, they were coming for him. Akron rotated it. And got a good look for Thornton. They did. Good ball reversal there. And Thornton unable to knock it down. But, again, he's got to continue to get the ball inside to 25 and goal to make him work. Well, Bickerstaff was sitting for a while, and he got fouled. Well, don't count that basket. It was Bickerstaff fouled first. And Enrique Freeman called for that. Well, you're talking about the play of Jalen Carey. Made it hard for Mark Byington to go back to Bickerstaff because of how the backup five was playing. Yeah, but picking up that third foul with 11 minutes left here, it's tough to, to leave him in and not trust him to get that fourth, especially it's such a tough assignment because you know Freeman's going to get a catch every time down. So the odds are not in your favor to not pick up that fourth foul. Tavari Johnson back in for Akron. And this guy at the free throw line, TJ Bickerstaff, he has been an uplifting presence for James Madison. Played in the NCAA tournament at Drexel, his first school. A couple years at Boston College, now closes it out at JMU. Little ball fake, Ali, closed off by Horton. And stays with the dribble and closes that possession with the score. Yeah, it's a good finish, a tough finish, but again, that is just a really tough earned basket by Ali Ali. And been really impressed with the one-on-one -on -one defense of these James Madison guards and wings. They they don't need a lot of help because they're so good at defending their man one-on-one. -on -one. And that time Ali was able to finish with a tough shot. Oh, come on. Green did it again. Prime time, Michael Green. I think he gave us a little bit of a look there as he ran by going down the other end. Ali with the offensive rebounds. And a nice shoulder shake to get free there. Edwards called for his first, but Michael Green does nothing but hit threes on primetime TV. Yeah, great pass out of the double by Raekwon Horton and a good shot fake. And Michael Green, instant offense off of that bench, knocking down his third three here tonight. James Madison trying somehow, some way to open this lead up even a little bit more here at home. Ali banging in on Horton. Pops in, and he's hit with a foul. And the crowd obviously not real happy, as you can tell, with that call. I don't think Mark Byington was either. It looked like pretty good defense there by Raekwon Horton. I think the officials are telling him right now, you got to put both hands up. He had his left arm up, which looked like it was totally vertical. 
but his right arm was down and on the hip a little bit. Right or wrong, I'm not sure, but I think that's why they called Raekwon Horton for that foul. If you show both hands, you've got a much better chance of getting away with that, even if there is a little bit of contact. You're not taking a stance on it? I mean, I thought he did a good job. He didn't leave the floor. It looked like his left arm was up. It was vertical. But I was always taught you've got to put both hands up just to not even leave it the chance. If they only see one arm up, they're going to assume that other one is doing something wrong. I appreciate your diplomacy. That's why I'm not a ref. <laughs> Randleman down the baseline, slithers to the rim. That was the first basket for Bryant Randleman. Does Akron have an answer with Ali? Playing through him a lot the last couple trips. And he bangs his way in again. It's just tough. When Ali Ali gets down there, the size of the length at 6'8", the way he handles the ball, just able to score over smaller defenders. I mean, Terrence Edwards is 6'5", 6'6", but he was just able to go right over him to lay it in. And Ali at 6'8". Green, not this time. Finally missed one, huh? Yeah. That'll stay with James Madison. Well, as much as we talk about Enrique Freeman in the low post, Ali Ali at 6'8 with a long arms, long wingspan, able to just get to his spot and rise up over Terrence Edwards, who's not small, 6'5", 6'6". No. You can just see the length there. And Akron trying to find a little bit of a rhythm offensively, maybe throwing the ball inside to 24 and gold, letting him go to work. Now, Ali was the leading scorer for Akron a couple years ago when they went to the NCAA tournament. Spent last year at Butler for John Gross's old boss, Thad Mata. And his back is a two-time transfer. Nice spin, Bickerstaff, and he was hung up. Bart Byington was ready to run down to the baseline ref and give him a piece of his mind. It's a great move there by T.J. Bickerstaff. Did a good job, got to the middle, and on the bump, nice little spin move to get fouled. And I don't think there was any doubt that Mark Byington was going to get that call, but a good move there by T.J. Bickerstaff. You don't have to take a hard stance this time on the call. Uh, hey, you got rewarded for a great move. That was a good spin. Yeah, it was. Just go where the defense isn't. It's pretty simple. You'd be a good hitting coach in baseball. Hit it where they ain't. <laughs> you know, Mark Byington, terrific job. I mean, we were we were watching what they do offensively and shoot around. You said it must have taken them a month and a half to learn all the sets that they're going through. Well, a lot of it is terminology based. Their terminology dictates what they're doing on a certain play. But they went, they go through their offense on game day shoot arounds at 100%. It is no joke. It is game speed. And Mark Byington wants his team to build habits and, and it pays off. I and mean, their movement offensively is really, really impressive. And their execution is really good. Big reason why they're 21 and 3 on the season. Well, Dawson with the extra pass. Ali's been playing out of the post a lot. He's got a mismatch here. Has size, but stays outside. And an offensive rebound for Hunter. Put another 20 up on the shot clock. And a tie-up. That'll be a foul call. Arrow would have been with JMU. Instead, they get Randleman on the foul. James Madison just not able to secure the defensive rebound right there. You get Brian Randleman on the, on the foul there. But a good defensive possession until they gave up the offensive rebound by James Madison. But here we go again. Ali Ali on the block. Looks like they're going to send some help this time. There's the help. There's the kick. The three. Dribble short. And a good look. Couldn't ask for a better look. Did a great job passing out against the double. Triple with a wide open three, but unable to knock it down. Three-point defense has been good most of the night. Both teams under 30% from outside. Green. Yes, sir! That has seen the bench for James Madison really shine. Yeah. The number one difference in the game by far, not even close. And 31-4 to four edge. James Madison bench points in this game. Just Michael Green, Jalen Carey, Raekwon Horton. All guys coming in off that bench are contributing in a major way for Mark Byington's team here tonight. Well, the offense for Akron has run through this guy lately. Ali Ali is shoved by Horton. And the theme of the night has been pushing and shoving. But it's James Madison one game back that has the best nets, even with App State beating him twice in the regular season. 
Yeah, obviously a lot of basketball left to be played in the Sun Belt once they get back to conference play But it makes sense as to why the head-to-head -head doesn't matter quite as much But at this point in the year the most important thing just continue to win as much as you can and the rest will take care of itself Well Bickerstaff called for his third foul And that's also a push into the one and one on the seventh team foul for James Madison Again Akron trying to get the ball inside to Enrique Freeman and I'm, as physical as this game has been, that is not that is not a foul. As, as physical as this game has been through the first 33 minutes, it's hard to call that a foul. And Enrique Freeman's a great player. Obviously, he gets a lot of calls, but that's a tough pill to swallow if you're TJ Pickerstaff there. Just, you know, it's frustrating as a player when the game has been the way it's been, and then all of a sudden you get called on a ticky-tack foul like that. Take the precedent out of it. If that doesn't exist, is that a foul? No. No, I don't think so. Even with the rugged way this game is played. Yeah, I mean, no. we, I didn't think so from our angle here. I didn't think so on the replay angle as well. It's, you know, sometimes you just got to let it go. But nonetheless, we play on and we shoot free throws. And Freeman with that free throw. Moved into fifth place all time in Akron history. Now has 1,632 points. In what's been a storied Akron career. This is a guy, David, that says he walks around campus now and he's kind of got to keep his head down because it's everybody. Easy to do when you're 6'9, by the way. Right. <laughs> easy to hide, knowing from personal experience. But everybody wants a selfie with him on Akron's campus. Well, he's, he's such an unbelievable personality. That, it was really enjoyable talking to him today after shoot around. He would have sat there and talked to us for 30 minutes if they didn't have to get on the bus. But it's just a, the improvement he has shown year after year after year. And now it's his fourth year. One of the best players in the country, best player in his conference, in my opinion, to see improvement. And for him to stay, I mentioned it earlier in the game, for him to not maybe try to chase greener past years is just a, a huge credit to John Gross and his staff, but also to the young man that Enrique Freeman is. And Ten on the shot clock. Akron's been playing some booty ball in this half. Back in their way in with Hunter. And it's Bickerstaff tapping it. No rebounds coming easily in this game. And this will be a jump ball for James Madison that they'll take down the other way. And T.J. Bickerstaff didn't come up with that rebound. But it looked like Enrique Freeman was going to, and Bickerstaff just stayed after the play and kept deflecting the ball and forced the jump ball there. So just great hustle by T.J. Bickerstaff and James Madison. Not too often Enrique Freeman's going to get two hands on that ball and not get it, but that time he did because of the hustle of T.J. Bickerstaff for, for the Dukes. We've seen exactly 60 rebounds in this game. If you had to guess, how many of those have just been a clean catch? Less than five. Every single rebound has been contested by at least two guys from each team, which we would expect from great rebounding teams. Oh, beautiful. Terrence Edwards. Breakdown there defensively for Akron with the high ball screen at the top of the key. And not too often, Terrence Edwards is going to find himself that open going to the lane. Tribble into the body of Friedel. How many times have we seen Greg Tribble just being physical in this game, driving to the rim? Able to finish and seems like every time James Madison has tried to open this game up, Akron somehow, some way finding an answer, just trying to hang around. Three double-digit scores for Akron: Tribble, Ali, and Freeman. And there's a bump for Freeman. And it's number three on him, fifth on the team, so no foul shots here. Not many better players in college basketball get to the rim than Terrence Edwards, especially when you got that kind of room. Great reverse finish there using the rim to protect from the shot blocker. A good job there by Noah Friedel defensively of staying vertical, but Greg Tribble just taking off and showing the strength there, able to finish for the answer on the other end. Uh, Horton, who just went out, he's been matched up with Ali a lot. And then that post up for the wing. Bickerstaff head down. That counts. And the foul. And what an acrobatic but talented finish there. Didn't travel and kept a grip on the ball. Took the bump. Kind of bobbled it there, but was able to regain possession. Able to finish. TJ Bickerstaff going to the free throw line for the three-point play here. Try to open this back up to nine. 
be the tie the biggest lead of the game. James Madison was up 17 to 8 early, but trying somehow, some way to try to pull ahead here late. Just over five minutes to go. And that does match the biggest lead when it was 17 8. And John Gross had to make a decision on Freeman, who just was tagged with his fourth foul. And I figured he may leave him in simply because Akron's going back down on offense. You know, a lot of times you take him out when you're going on defense, but choosing to get him a little bit of a blow here, but I have a feeling he's not going to sit over there on that bench for too long. Tamari Johnson. That's short. And Friedel's out of bounds. So, David, this becomes a much smaller lineup. The sub was Freeman, who's 6'8", for Johnson, who's 5'11". So Akron playing with smaller guys out there. I think John Gross trying to put a little more perimeter shooting on the floor. You got five guys who are capable of knocking down a three. With the way the pace of this game has been, it's been a slower possession, lower possession type game. If you're Akron, you can't wait too long on these offensive possessions. You got to try to go being down nine. Friedel almost picked that off. There will be six on the shot clock for Akron. We'll try to the picture looks a little bit lonely. Feels like he has a team that could maybe add another portrait up there with the trophy in the Sun Belt this year. Well, we talked earlier about how Akron has gotten everybody's best shot this year, not sneaking up on anybody. Same thing for James Madison. They have a target on their back every single night, and they have answered the bell. Clock the ticks. Part. Tribble got fouled. Friedel hit him. This will be a three-point foul with Friedel at the end of the clock grabbing his arm. And be second time in this game. It looked like there's some contact there. Now, who initiated it is another debate, but yeah, that's clearly a foul. Great angle right there. Great job by our camera crew getting a good look at that one. But that's the second time in this game. We saw it right before halftime where Noah Friedel just got enough contact on the arm of the shooter. And in that situation, again, if he makes it, he makes it. But you don't want to stop the clock and send him to the free throw line with a chance to score. With Greg Triple missing that first free throw, may dodge a little bit of a bullet here. He made the correction. And the scoring has come from three guys for Akron. Triple with 14, Ali with 13, Freeman with 15. It's been the bench scoring for JMU that has them ahead now by seven. Enrique Freeman staying in with those four fouls. Looks like Akron's going to go zone here. Maybe try to hide Enrique Freeman in the middle of that zone. Switch up the looks here a little bit. Now, James Madison did spend a few minutes at the end of shoot around today working on their zone offense. So no surprise here. Going with the 1-3-1 look. Maybe a little bit of a matchup 2-3 zone. When the best player, Freeman, is cleared out of there. Bickerstaff bumped him away. Yeah, and just a great set there. Set a little cross screen with the overload. And... If you're Akron, the clock is starting to become your enemy here with as low a possession game as this has been. Down nine and a terrible timing for another turnover for the Zips. Friedel, open look. Cash is in. A very talented basketball family, of course. His uncle JB, the head coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Got to give some love to his mom, though. His mom was an actress. You seen the movie Hall Pass? I have. She had uh, a credit in that movie. Oh, wow. We have to go back and check that out. Yeah. If we have to fill before our Pac-12 game, we can roll in clips of T.J. Bickerstaff's mom and Hall Pass. That's exactly what America wants to see in between college basketball on a Saturday. You and I breaking down movies. Yeah, they do. Well, just ahead of the four-minute mark. Akron's got to get busy in a hurry here. Down by 12. And Tribble not here. And Freeman has it knocked out of bounds to James Madison. Enrique Freeman still stuck on nine rebounds trying to get that 21st double-double of the season. Obviously, right now, more concerned with trying to get this win. You see Akron start to pick up full court here. Try to speed this game up a little bit. Maybe get a quick turnover. He has gone 10 minutes. Freeman has without a rebound. And there's a foul. And it's the final foul to push James Madison into the bonus 17 foul on Akron. You know, watching Akron get ready and, and throughout the year, 
I can't think of a 10 minute stretch in a game this year where Enrique Freeman does not have a rebound. It probably hasn't happened. That's why. I mean, I can't imagine it has. Guys, 20 double doubles on the season. Hard to do so going 10 minutes without a rebound in a 40 minute game. He's leading the country in double doubles. He's one away tonight from his 21st. All but three games this season. James Madison with Green at the line. And we'll push it to a 13 point lead. There it is right there. Right on cue. So extending his NCAA lead with his 21st double double. His first rebound in 10 minutes. How can they reward him down here? Good pass, Ali with the slam. Yeah, great pass, a great cut there by Ali. Ali been standing watching. Akron forcing a timeout here from James Madison. We've got a couple left in the tank. Very impressive to watch. So credit to Mark Byington and his staff for putting together a great game plan and executing it. James Madison, 12th in the country in three-point defense. There's a turnover. Dawson takes it away. And a three is in and out. And the rebound for Green. So James Madison gets away with one. It dodged a huge bullet right there. Just a careless pass by T.J. Bickerstaff on the press offense. But Akron unable to knock down that three. And James Madison now going to use as much of that 30-second shot clock as they can. Well, usually they like to play fast. But holding on to a double-digit lead. And it's Bickerstaff in close. Blew the layup. Now you got to go if you're acting. You got to score quickly, get that full court pressure set up. You mentioned it. No timeout, so you got to know what you're doing right away to score. Now Freeman had deep position, but Friedel rakes it away. Now a lollipop pass for Edwards. What a heads up play by Noah Friedel. Saw Terrence Edwards going down, and a great catch and an even more impressive finish. Nice answer, Greg Tribble. We'll be at the line for one more. Well, there's a reason why James Madison averages nine steals a game. You see their activity on the ball. Noah Friedel creating the steal. Great advance pass. And Terrence Edwards getting out on the break and finishing. But Greg Tribble on the other end with a quick answer. Not a whole lot of time went off the clock there. Chance to make this a 10-point game. Give him, also give him a chance to set their defense if he's able to knock down this free throw. Dribble has an 18-point night that ties his best on the season. We're at 18 against Buffalo and Mac play. His team down 10, though. And a quick pass to the middle. And then Green gets it across half court. Good decision there to bring it back out. You see a lot of times guys go in there two on one, thinking we need to score, but a great decision there. Bring it out, try to use some clock. And they can milk it down to almost two minutes. Freeman playing with four fouls in there. Edwards going after him and gets the bounce. And John Gross was trying to get his guys to go trap the ball. Didn't do it. Terrence Edwards, but you just can't take a lot of time offensively. You got to try to create as many extra possessions here as you can. And Ali Ali looks like he's going to try to go right away. Well, three was shut off by Edwards. So they'll have to go for option B. Slow developing here, already almost 15 seconds coming up. The game clock here, got to go. And inside two minutes, Hunter contested three thuds. Friedel taps it back out. Dribble off a shot fake into the body of Horton for two more. And no timeouts again for Akron, so you got to set your defense right away. I'm sure they discussed whether or not they're going to foul, depending on who catches the ball. Try to get a five-second count first, maybe a quick trap. Down 10 for Akron. A minute and a half to go, and no foul there in the backcourt. That's surprising. Maybe now that they got it over half court, they're going to foul, which it looks like they're going to. And Edwards is the guy that they put at the line. 79% shooter. This will be a one and one. Eighth team foul against the Zips. There wasn't much pressure in the backcourt either. There was on the inbound, but after that, Akron ran away from the ball. Well, it looked like there was a little bit of confusion on whether or not they were going to foul after the ball went inbounds. You know, a lot of times you try to get a five-second count. You try to get a trap. Once you can't get either one of those, then you try to foul right away. So they lost about seven or eight seconds of game time there, but just any way you cut it, it's just tough. You're down ten with just over a minute to play. It's, it's going to take a miracle. 
especially when you're unable to knock down any perimeter jump shots on the other end. Edwards adds to his night 15 points. James Madison has not lost a non conference game this year, 12 and 0. And games outside the Sun Belt. Ali Ali can't shake Horton and the tap away. It's out of bounds. This looks like how the game started. There's like an invisible fence. Not sure I'd want you as a client. Oh, mm. how about that? Oh, big bucks, David Padgett. It is Akron ball with Freeman in the post. One minute to go. And an offensive foul, and he just fouled out of the game. But I was wondering at some point tonight if James Madison was going to do that. As much as Akron's been backing them down here, you can take one or two bumps. Took three finally on the fourth one. You got nothing to lose by trying it, so a great job there by TJ Bickerstaff drawing that offensive foul. Freeman will get out of here with his 21st double double that leads the nation. But he has to sit down 12. And it looking like Akron's going to take a road, road loss here. And the Friedel lost it, but it's off Akron. And uh, look at this Anthony Eads. But it's going to have to be an avalanche for the Zips. Zips are 5 of 27 from 3 in this game. They're taking a lot of time again. Yes, they are. And that's James Madison defense again, just not allowing anything easy from anywhere on the court. Ali wanted badly to take a 3, and he settles for 2 and a foul. Yeah, but you, you mentioned it, just a lot of time went off the clock there. And again, you're going to the free throw line, but you're just. In theory, you're just trading twos for twos. So it makes this obviously a 10 point game still, but you mentioned it's going to have to be a miracle somehow, some way. Maybe John Gross will foul one more time, depending on whether or not Ali Ali is able, able to make these free throws. Well, something to keep in mind Akron is playing shorthanded tonight. Nate Johnson, a starting guard, is out with injury. He's a 43% three point shooter on the year. They do expect Nate Johnson to come back. Broken hand against Buffalo. He's missed tonight in the seven games before this. So that's something that could factor into Akron's potential tournament run in March in the back tournament. With half a minute to go. Akron doesn't give a foul in the backcourt. And Bickerstaff on the reverse. Little icing. Finally get a three up. It's short. Friedel the rebounds. No foul there. And Green does take the two. Oh, what a performance here tonight by this James Madison Dukes team. Defensively just dominated the game. A great win against a tough Akron opponent. James Madison picking up their 22nd win of the season. Came into the night leading the country in wins. James Madison.